Welcome back to episode two of The Changelog. Today, we're going to go through some industry news first and then talk a little bit about the latest developments on the Screenly side. Um, I'm joined today again Let's with Daniel, who's my head of product. And uh, we will talk a bit about uh, everything. Should we start about stop industry news, Daniel, or what do you think? Yeah, let's uh, let's start off with that. Um, some entrance into the market. Maybe you have some words on that. Yeah, this is one of the interesting ones that I at least found interesting. Is uh, Unify, who's Ubiquiti Network, also known as, is uh, one of the most interesting players in the networking world. I think uh, they have entered the digital signage space recently uh, with two products. Um, I would say they're fairly basic at this point, but the fact they integrate with the Unify stack makes it noteworthy, I think. And uh, yeah, they're, they're mostly for very basic signage use cases, but I think as an entry, as an entrant into the industry, I think it's one of the most interesting ones I've seen in a recent time, I would say. So I think that's that's kind of noteworthy on the signage space at large. So that's part this of it. Is, is this hardware and software or uh, make sure both? Yeah, so so Unify is, is known for their networking equipment, like their their access points and their switches, and uh, they have a they started by an ex Apple engineer, and uh, has a very Apple esque a feel to it. Both like their hardware is very nice looking, uh, very Apple esque, and their software is actually very nice as well. And uh, it's a soft it's a software and hardware play, uh, very PoE driven, so power Ethernet, so you can power this stuff directly over Ethernet. And I think that's kind of neat. Um, did do a little bit of reading on it and watch some reviews, and um, it's still very rudimentary, like it's nowhere near capable of replacing a proper signage installation. Uh, but it's still interesting to see that they are paying attention to the signage space. So we'll see. We'll see whether they, if they become more a serious threat in the industry or not. But they seem uh, at least paying attention to that space, which is interesting to see. It seems to be like an Android tablet essentially, but with some fluff on top of that. Yeah. So I think that well, was interesting. Always but new that was activity really, and uh, real interesting thing since last time. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Uh... I was excited to see these uh, big guys getting involved in the signage space. So, uh. yeah, Cisco used to be part, used to do some signage in the way back in the winter days, but I think they completely sunsetted that uh, department because I haven't heard anything mm-hmm. about that in recent years, at least. So, so. yeah, sometimes um, they can cool. get a little ahead of themselves. So, a little bit, yeah. Um, cool. So, should we move on to uh, the screenly side of things then? I guess with update. So, yeah, should we start with the yeah, opening? Let's uh, yeah, um, uh, we'll mention that um, for those of you following our channels, you know we're hiring a new front-end developer. Um, so uh, this is a you know push to not just to only add headcount, but also strategically at Screenly. Um, you know, of course, we have our uh, standing dev team um, for software and and uh, also the hardware side. Um, you know, but we found that uh, as we you know, do our sprint plannings and all that. We've uh, focused on, on definitely important issues, um, but often the customer facing ones can uh, get put to the side. And um, to combat that a bit, uh, we are hiring a developer to focus uh, uh, solely on front end product uh, changes uh, that are really governed by customer uh, feedback. So, um, you know, we. And we, super we, interesting pipeline, I would say. As well, like we've we've had, I think we had two hundred applicants in like over the weekend when we first opened yeah. the role. I think it's up to yeah. like three, four hundred applicants already by now. It's crazy, crazy yeah, it pipeline. Was, it was a lot. Uh, shortlisted uh, some uh, some good ones. Talking to a bunch, so uh, yeah, I think we'll have a good addition. Um, but I, I think also it will be a good improvement for our end users. Um, obviously, the behind the scenes stuff is what really you know powers the whole thing keeps the reliability up but sometimes you need some just real you know usability features to get off the ground so whether that's how do you organize folders at scale um, how do you uh, uh, you know uh, b- better manage your, your team access levels things like that um, uh, basically the mandate is to, to only focus on uh, features that are newsletter you know newsletter worthy um, so 
Uh, or uh, change log worthy. That, or change log worthy, yeah. So things that people can can see and touch. So, uh, so yeah. So we're excited about that. So if if you're interested or or, or know anyone who might be a good fit, of course, let us know. Um, but hope to have some uh, uh, final decisions there next couple of weeks. So um, exciting changes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Super interesting stuff there. Um, so let's dive into what we actually shipped on the Prague side since the last call. Then, um, yeah. should we start with the support pin? Let's let's talk about that. So, uh, well, maybe maybe one uh, uh, way we can intro that is, uh, you know, at, at Screen League, security is is really at the forefront of everything we do. So, um, we noticed a long time ago, Victor. Uh, has definitely been very vocal about this on the speaking circuit, but um, often security is really a second thought in the signage industry, which it shouldn't be. Um, uh, Digital signs are, of course, meant to be public and be seen, so this is a really uh, ripe target for any hacker uh, to, you know, cause mischief and and, uh, uh, display things that shouldn't be displayed. Uh, But also, these signs that are meant to be seen are often in um, uh, public access locations. Um, so, you know, they can be physically tampered with, um, uh, and they can be a access point for hackers to actually, you know, important, uh, business information and, and, and customer information as well. So, uh, it certainly shouldn't be an afterthought and, um, you know, definitely something screenly is, is working on ourselves. So, uh, that being said, uh, we added a, another security to uh, layer to our uh, support uh, pipeline. Um, so now when uh, team members, uh, the customers uh, contact the Screenly team, uh, there is a unique pin code that they can access in their settings menu. Uh, it changes every 24 hours to uh, make sure, so that we can make sure they are who they say they are. Um, yeah. Uh, go ahead. And give some backstory to that. So from a security vantage point, really the human factor is almost always the weakest link as once you hit a certain level of security. And uh, this security pin was really inspired by uh, something that Namecheap did, I would say probably a decade ago by now. They got compromised. Namecheap is a big popular domain registrant and uh, they got compromised using their support channel. And uh, Somebody impersonated an email and was able to compromise an account that way using the support. And to rectify that, uh, Namecheap introduced something similar to what we've introduced, uh, which is a pin that rotates on a regular basis. And it really acts as a secondary metric to allow our support staff to verify that the person actually is who they claim to be. And so... This is particularly important when we're doing support across multiple channels and we do support using single sign-on and when you can sign into using a screen account then obviously you prove that you are who you are. But when you do support over other channels like Facebook Messenger, it does open us up a bit to new attack vectors. And this support pin was really designed around uh, kind of locking down that vantage uh, attack vector. So that's kind of where it comes from and why it's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think too, it's one of those um, rare circumstances where the added security also uh, can add some uh, convenience to the um, uh, customer experience. So typically, those those things work in opposite directions. Um, but you know, instead of waiting for a text message or email that could you know take two minutes to actually show up in the in the inbox, uh, users can find it right there in their interface, you know, immediately. So yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so if you're uh, a current Screenly customer and are you know opening a support ticket, that uh, is going to be part of your uh, maybe portfolio. maybe part of your flow, depending well, maybe, on how yeah. you verify. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, but be on the lookout for that. So uh, yeah, so that's an exciting change. Um, we've also um, uh, been adding some uh, new edge apps to our edge app store, so you guys. I uh, heard about our Edge App launch in the last few weeks. Edge App Store uh, App Store launch in the last few weeks. Um, you know, again, the the idea behind that was to make our Edge Apps more accessible to non-developer users. Um, and we've been adding uh, one 
basically on a two week cadence. Um, so that's quite good. Um, we, uh, recently launched one as a, a for a countdown timer. Of course, uh, plenty yeah. of obvious use cases there. Um, yeah, maybe we should talk about uh, some of those use cases, Daniel, before we dive in, like why we created it and, and what the idea is. And um, it really came sure. from the idea that um, a lot of projects um, have a count time, countdown timers on the wall where they have like a go live, for instance. And uh, one of our customers um, um, that shouldn't be named, uh, but a very big um, uh, space agency uses our uh, software for for countdown timers, and uh, that's kind of where it stems from. Building out uh, that so it's more convenient, so people can put a countdown timer on the wall very easily using the edge app. And all you need to do to do it, create it is create whatever you want to call a message for your countdown timer, and then what it's counting down to, and and off you go. So no way to no need to reimplement that. Use a third party software for that. So that's already built in. So that's that's why we kind of built that. Yeah, and, and plenty of you know typical enterprise uh, uh, use cases that are kind of fun can come to mind too, right? I mean, so if there's just like a um, I don't know some type of of, of uh, you know sales team um, a quota that needs to be reached in a certain end of quarter, of days, yeah, exactly. So you know, just kind of a motivating uh, thing to keep on the wall. So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so that's a nice one, um, and I think um, probably uh, uh, a lot more versatile is our um, our iframe uh, edge app. Um, mm. Yeah, Victor, maybe talk about some of the background and and like customer requests that that yeah. spawn that. Absolutely. So I think iframes are less popular than they were a decade ago, uh, which I think is a good thing in general, but iframes are still a very popular way of embedding content into some other web pages. And historically, we've had a lot of users who have used iframes for their signage. Um, New Relics, there springs to mind, Datadog, and a few other monitoring software. Uh, they used to rely pretty heavily on iframes for dashboards. Um, I'm not sure those two are relevant anymore. I think they might have native integrations and public link sharing these days, but the point still stands that there are a lot of tools out there that uh, provide you with an iframe snippet that you can embed on your uh, intranet site or whatever uh, to include uh, the content. And what the iframe edge app does is to provide you a shorthand, really, for showing those on your screen. So all you need to do is create a new edge app with that iframe edge app and paste in that iframe snippet and then what we will do behind the scenes is a bit of magic and basically optimize that for full screen view and optimize for screen uh, you playback. So we strip out like various settings, like if it's if it has a certain size parameters and so on, we strip that out to make sure that it looks nice in a full screen mode. And uh, and that's really that's really what it is. It's it's a very simple application and uh, but it does it does have a lot of utility and, and does simplify things and. Previously, people had to kind of self-serve some kind of HTML page that they include the HTML snippets in, add that as a web asset, but needless to say, that was rather clunky. So this Edge app kind of streamlines that process and makes it a lot easier for people to add these assets. So that's that's really it. It's it's very versatile application or a versatile Edge app, uh, and it's yeah, really solve some real business problems that for for some customers there. But as we're adding more and more native applications, uh, we hope to uh, maybe not rely as heavily on IA frames, but for certain third party applications um, that we don't have native integrations with, that's still going to be very handy going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think too, um, it's exciting. Just in you know, speaking from an internal uh, perspective at Screenly. Uh, you know, now that we have the app store and we, we've, you know, definitely have like a cadence of releasing these new ones that I think, you know, in another quarter, we're going to have a real, uh, solid, uh, collection of, of these edge apps, which are really, truly plug and play. Um, yes. you know, and then, and then beyond that, as, uh, people who want to customize those, they also have that ability, right? So, Correct. um, uh, developing the ecosystem, right? 
Exactly. And we have, um, we've scaled up our headcount for building out these edge apps now. So we should improve the cadence of, of shipping these edge apps. And we have a pretty long backlog of application that we're building out over the coming uh, weeks and months. Some of them are industry specific, specific. Some of them are more generic. If you do have any ideas or if you have any particular pain point you want to address, uh, if it's a universal use case that we think is something that is uh, worthwhile investing in that we think will solve a pain point for other users, uh, it's absolutely something that we happen to have a conversation with. Uh, we are building out, we have, like I said, we have a list of these that we are planning to build, but if there are particular ones, specific one that you are interested in having or you know there's a demand for, we're very happy to have a conversation about that. We might just ask you for a personal support pin first, though. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, it's true. That is true. So yeah. that's what we're doing, and um, yeah, I think that's that's really interesting. And and we spoke a little bit about the thing. I can, unless I guess we can tie back into what we spoke about in in the last change log. The whole thing with integrations uh, around um, headless CMS seem to pick it up even more since the last call. We we have mm. more and more conversation of people that want to have kind of a, what can I call a gray label uh, screenly where they build their own solution on top of screenly and where they uh, basically build their own UI or integrate with their own UI on top of our API platform and I think that's an interesting development that uh, I think is worthwhile uh, covering as well and talking a bit about here because I think that's as something is something I really welcome, and I think it's a really good use case. Stuff have reinvent the wheel of building your own signage platform, building on top of an existing platform like Screenly, and build that into your system and add your unique value on top of that. Uh, so that's something I guess uh, we have seen even more since our last conversation on, on change level. We did speak about headless CMS, so I'm very bullish on this, and I really hope that's the future of the industry uh, for more sophisticated use cases and. That's a really a change that we really welcome at Screenly. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Good. Uh, well, um, one other thing to mention too, um, uh, with the Easter uh, weekend coming up, we are uh, going to be doing a sale on our uh, digital signage players. Um, mm. So that'll be ten percent off. Uh, the code is Easter ten. Uh, so if you guys are looking to expand your digital signage fleet, uh, now's the time. And uh, you can use that code on our website and uh, uh, purchase your players there. So that's either the Screenly player or, of course, the more uh, powerful Screenly player Max. So, and we also have the five packs that are live as well on in the Shopify store. Also true. So if you are, um, you know, looking to expand in bulk, that's also a possibility. So amazing. Yeah. Cool. I think that's all we have for today, isn't it, right? I think that's it, you know, quick one, uh, short and sweet. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. You know, this is our second uh, episode. Uh, definitely got some good feedback on the first one. And, uh, uh, you know, this will be about a monthly uh, plus or minus uh, uh, discussion on what's been going on and what we hope to do next. So uh, right. always trying to keep in touch with our uh, customers and community. So. Excellent. Perfect. Thanks so much, Daniel. And talk All to right. you guys soon. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.